yet unknowing world how these things came about. So shall you hear of carnal, bloody, and unnatural acts. Of accidental judgments, casual slaughters, of deaths put on by cunning and forced cause. And above all, of Hamlet. Welcome, Horatio. Welcome, good Marcellus. Has this thing appeared again tonight? I have seen nothing. Horatio says tis but our fantasy, and would not let belief take hold of him, touching this dreaded sight seen twice of us. Therefore, I have entreated him along with us to watch the minutes of this night. I say, it will not appear. Well, sit down a while and let us once again assail your ears that are so fortified against our storm. Oh, sit we down, and let us hear Barnado speak of this. Last night of all, Marcellus and myself, the bell then beating one. Hey, break me off! Look where it comes again! In the same figure, like, our jeez, that's dead. Thou art a scholar! Speak to it, Horatio! Look he not like our founder, Market Horatio! Most like! It harrows me with fear and wonder. It would be spoke to. Why art thou that interprets this time of night? By heaven, I charge thee, speak! Stay and speak! It is offended. See, it fades away. Stay and speak, I charge thee, speak! It is gone and will not answer. How now, Horatio? You tremble and look pale. Is this not something more than fantasy? What think you are? Before my God, I might not thus believe. Without the sensible and true vault of mine own eyes, is it not like King Hamlet? As thou art thyself. To strange, the gross in scope of mine opinion this bodes in strange eruption to our state. To stop! It comes again! Stay, illusion! If thou hast any sound or use of voice, speak to me. If there be any good thing to be done that may to thee do ease and grace to me, speak to me. Stay and speak! Tis here! Tis here! Tis gone! It was about to speak when the cock crew. Break we are wont. And by my advice, let us impart what we have seen tonight unto young Hamlet. For upon my life, the spirit, dumb to us, will speak to him. Let's do it. I pray, and I this morning know where we shall find a most convenient. brother's death, the memory be green, and that it is befitted to bear our hearts in grief, and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe, yet so far hath this crushing thought nature. Oh. <clears throat> that we with wisest well think on him, together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore, our sometime sister, now our partner, have we as far with a defeated joy, with an auspicious and a dropping eye, with mirth and funeral, and with dirge and marriage, an equal scale waiting delight and all taken to wife. Nor have we here in barge read the wisdoms which have freely gone with this affair along. For all, our thanks. And now, Laertes, what's the news with you? You told us of some suit. What is it, Laertes? What wouldst thou beg, Laertes, that shall not be my offer, not thy asking? What wouldst thou have, Laertes? Good Claudius, fair Gertrude, your leave and favor to return to France, from whence though willingly I came to Denmark to show my duty in your coronation. Yet now I must confess, that duty done. My thoughts and wishes bend again towards France, and bow them to your gracious leave and pardon. Oh, have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? Ah, uh, hath my lord, wrung me from my slow leave by laborsome petition. And alas, upon his will I sealed my heart consent. I do beseech you give him leave to go. Take thy fair hour, Laertes, time be thine, and thy best grace is spended at thy will. Hmm. 
And now, my cousin Hamlet and my son. A little more than kin and less than kind. <laughs> How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord. I am too much in the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy nighted color off, and let thine eye look like a friend on us. Do not forever with thy veiled lid seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest tis common, all that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. I, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam? Nay, it is. I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black, nor windy suspiration of forced breath, no, nor the fruitful river of the eye, nor the dejected havior of the visage, together with all moods, forms, and shapes of grief that can denote me truly. These indeed seem, for they are actions that a man might play. But I have that within which passes of show. These but the trappings and suits of woe. Mm, Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your father. But you must know, your father lost a father. That father lost, lost his, and the survival bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow. But to persevere in absent condolement, tis unmanly grief. It shows a heart unfortified, a mind impatient, an understanding simple and unschooled. For what we know must be and is as common as any the most vulgar thing to sense. Why should we in our peevish opposition take it to heart? We pray you throw to the earth this unprevailing woe and think of us as of a father. <laughs> For let the world take note, you are the most immediate to our throne. And with no less nobility of love than which a father bears his son, do I impart toward you. Hmm. And for your intent in going back to school this semester, it is most retrograde to our desire. And we beseech you and bend you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye, our chieftain's advisor, cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee, stay with us. I shall in all my best obey you, madam. Why, tis a loving and fair reply. Madam, come, this gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart, in grace for of no jack and health that Demer drinks today. Come away. Oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt thaw and resolve itself into a dew, or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self-slaughter. Oh, God, God, how weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of the world. Fie upon it, fie! Tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. That it should come to this, but two months dead. Nay, not so much, not two. So excellent a man that was to this Hyperion to a satyr, so loving to my mother that he might not patine the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth must I remember. Why, she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it had fed on, and yet within a month, let me not think on it. Frailty, thy name is woman, a little month. Or ere these shoes were old, with which she followed my poor father's dead body. All tears! Wait, was she? Even she? Oh, God! A, a beast that wants discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Married with my uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I to Hercules. Oh, most wicked speed, to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot. Come to good. But break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hamlet? Oh, I am very glad to see you, <laughs> Horatio. Or do I forget myself? The same, my friend, and your poor servant ever. Oh, come, sir, I'll change that name with you. What make you from university, Horatio? Marcellus! My good lord! <laughs> I'm very glad to see you. Good even. But what in faith make you from our college? Oh, oh. a truant disposition. Oh, 
Come, sir, I know you are no truant, but what is your business with our business? <laughs> we'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. <laughs> My friend, I came to see your father's funeral. I pray thee, do not mock me. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, it full at heart upon. Would that I had met my dearest foe in heaven, or ever I had seen the day, Horatio. My father, methinks I see my father. Where? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once. He was a goodly king. He was a man. Take him for all in all. I shall not look upon his like again. I think I saw him yesterday. Saw who? Your father. My father? Well, for God's love, let me hear! Okay. Two nights together, had these gentles been thus encountered, a figure like your father appears before them. This to me that they sit for the part, and I with them the third night to get the watch. The apparition comes. I knew your father. Well, did you not speak to it? I did, but Auntie made it none. Tis very strange. As I do live, tis true. And we did think it went down in our duty to let you know of it. Looked he frowningly? A countenance. More in sorrow than in anger. I would that I had been there. He would have much amazed you. Very like. I will watch tonight. Perchance we'll walk again. I warrant you will. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it, though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. I pray you all, that whatsoever else shall happen tonight, give it an understanding, but no tongues. I will requite your loves, so fare you well. My father's spirit, all is not well. I doubt some foul play. Oh, what did the night were come? Till then, sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all earth o'erwhelms them to men's eyes. My necessaries are embarked. Farewell. And sister, sleep not. Let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? For Hamlet, in the trifling of his favor, hold it in a fashion and a toy in blood. Forward, not permanent. Sweet, not lasting. The perfume and suppliance of a minute. No more. No more but so? Think it no more. Perhaps he loves you now, but you must fear his will is not his own. For he himself is subject to his birth. He may not, as unvalued persons do, carve for himself. For on his choice depends the safety and the health of this whole state. Then if he says he loves you, Fear it, Ophelia, fear it. My dear sister, that safety lies in fear. Youth to itself rebels, though none else near. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman of my heart. But my good brother, do not, as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, while like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance tread, and ignores his own advice. Oh, fear me not. I stay too long, but here my father comes, and double blessings and double grace. Yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard for shame, you are stayed for. There my blessing with thee. Oh, ah, and these few precepts in thy memory. Look thou character, give thy thoughts, no tongue, nor any unproportion thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast in their adoptions tried will rapple them into thy soul with hoops of steel. Beware of an entrance to a quarrel, but being in it, that the opposed may beware of thee. Give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Costly thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not express in fancy. Rich, not gaudy. For the apparel oft proclaims the man, and they in France of best rank and station are of a most generous chief in that. This above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow, as the night, the day, thou canst be false to any man. Farewell, my blessed seasons with thee. Most humbly do I take my leave, Father. The time invests in you, go. Farewell, Ophelia, and remember well what I have said to you. To then my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Farewell. What is it, Ophelia, he hath said to you? So please you something touching on Hamlet. 
Very well bethought. Tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you, and you yourself have your audience been most free and bounteous. If it be so, as so tis put on me, and in that way of caution, I must tell you, you do not understand yourself so clearly as it behooves my daughter and your honor. What is between you? Give me up the truth. He hath, father, as of late, made many tenders and affections to me. Affections? <laughs> do you believe his tenders you may call him? I do not know what I should think. He's important me with love in an honorable fashion. Aye, fashion you may call it. Go to, go to. He has made countenance to his speech, father, with almost all the holy battles of heaven. Aye, springs to catch woodcocks. I do know when the blood burns how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows. These blazes, daughter, you must not take for fire. This is for all. I would not, in plain terms, have you give words or talk with young Hamlet. Look to it. I will charge you. Come, you Shall obey, father. What hour now? I think you lapsed at twelve. No, it is struck. Indeed, I heard it not. Then draws near the season wherein the spirit held us born to walk. Look! Oh, it comes! Ministers of grace, defend us! Be thy intents wicked or charitable, thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Father. Oh, answer me! Let me not burst in ignorance, but tell what this may mean that thou, dead corpse, revisits thy business on earth. Say, why is this? Wherefore? What should we do? Do not go with it. No, by no means. Oh, no. Do not, my friend. Why? What should be the fear? I do not set my life at a pin's fee. And for my soul, what can it do that being a thing immortal as itself? I'll follow it. What if it tempts you to want the floor to my lord? And there seems some other horrible form which might deprive your person of reason and draw you into madness. Think of it! I'll follow you! You shall not go, my lord! Hold off your hand! You shall not go! My fate cries out on a hand me, gentlemen! By heaven, I'll make a ghost of him that lets me! I say, away! Let us follow. Tis not fit thus to obey him. Have after. thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fast and fires, till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away, but that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house. I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood, and make thine tuned eyes like stars start from their spheres, and each particular hair to stand an end like quills upon the fearful porpentine. But this eternal blazon must not be to ears of flesh and blood. Pity me not, but lend thy serious hearing to what I shall embode. Speak, I am bound to hear. List, list, O oh list, if thou didst ever thy dear father love, revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder most foul, as in the best it is. But this most, this most foul, strange, and unnatural. Haste me to know it, that I may sweep to my revenge. I find the act. Now, Hamlet here. Tis given out that, sleeping in my garden, a serpent stung me. But no, thou sweet youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life, now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle! I, the incestuous, that adulterous beast, with witchcraft of his wits, with traitorous gifts, all oh, wicked wit and gifts that have the power so to seduce, one to a shameful lust the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. Oh, Hamlet! What a falling off was there for me, 
whose love was of that dignity, that it went hand in hand, even with the vow I made to her in marriage, and to decline upon a wretch whose natural gifts were poor to those of mine. Brief let me be. Sleeping in my garden, my custom always of the afternoon, upon my secure hour, thy uncle stole with juice of cursed poison in a vial, and in the porches of my ears did pour the leprous distillment, whose effect holds such enmity with blood of man that swift as quicksilver it courses through the natural gates and alleyways of the body. Thus was I, sleeping by a brother's hand, of life, of rank, of wife at once dispatched, no frequently made, but sent my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible. Horrible, most horrible! If thou hadst nature in thee, bear it not. Let not thy royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But howsoever thou pursues this act, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven, and those thorns that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. Fare thee well at once. Hamlet, remember me. Heaven. Oh, fie! Hold, hold my heart. And you, my sinews, grow not instant old, but bear me stiffly up. Remember thee? I, thou poor ghost. Yea, from the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all fond records that youth and observation have copied there. And thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. O oh, most pernicious woman! O oh, villain! Villain! Smiling, damn it, villain! Mean it is that I may set it down and one may smile and smile and be a villain! So, uncle, there you are. Now to my word. It is remember me. I have sworn it. What news, my friend? Oh. Wonderful. Tell it. No, you will reveal it. Not I. Nor I, my lord. But you'll be secret? Aye. It is an honest ghost. That let me tell you. For your want to know it is between us, or master it as you may. And now, good friends, give me one poor request. What is it? We will. Never make known what you have seen here tonight. My, my lord, lord, we will not. Nay, but swear it. In faith, my friend, not I. Nor I, my lord, in faith. Swear! <laughs> well, come on, you heard this fellow. Consent to swear. I suppose the oath, my friend. Swear never to speak of this that you have heard. Swear! Oh, day and night, but this is wondrous strange. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There is more in heaven and earth, Horatio, than is dreamt of in your philosophy. But come. Here as before, never, so help your mercies, how strange or odd some air I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think me to put an antic disposition on, that you, at such time seeing me, never shall note that you know aught of me. This do swear, so grace and mercy at your most need help you. Swear! We swear! We swear. So, gentlemen, with all my love, I do commend me to you. Let us go in together and still your fingers on your lips, I pray. The time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite that ever I was born to set it right. He waxes desperate with imagination. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark.
You shall do marvelous wisely, good Ronaldo, before you visit Laertes in France to make inquire of his behavior. My lord, I did intend it. Mary, well said! Very well said. Look you, sir, take you us to our some distant knowledge of him. As thus, I know his father and his friends, and in part him. Do you mark us, Ronaldo? I do, my lord. And in part him, but... You may say, not well. What was I about to say? By the mass, I was about to say something. Where did I leave? Add in part him, but, and not well, sir. I, Mary! By indirections. Find directions out. So my former lecture and advice shall you, my son. You have me? Have you not? I have. God be with you. Fare you well. Good, my lord. Oh, ah, uh, observe his inclinations yourself. I shall, my lord. And let him play his music. I will, my lord. Farewell. Fare you well. Goodbye. <laughs> How oh, now, Ophelia? What's the matter? Oh, Father, I have been so affrighted. With what in the name of God? Yeah. He, with his doublet all embraced, he comes before me. Not for my love. I do not know. But truly, I do fear it. What said he? He took me by the wrist, and he held me hard. Then he goes to the length of his arm, and with his other hand does o'er his brow. He falls to such perusal of my face as he would drive. Long he stayed so. He then raised a sigh so piteous and profound as it did seem to shatter his bulk and end his being. That done, he lets me go. And then with his head over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without eyes. For out the door he went without their help to last they vented their light on me. Come go with me, I will go seek the king. This is the very ecstasy of love. I am so... Wow given him any hard words of late. No, my father. But as you did command, I did repel his sweet words to me and deny it his access to me. That hath made him mad. I'm sorry with better heed and judgment I have not observed him. I fear he did, but trifle, I meant to rack thee, but bestrew my jealousy. By heavens, it is proper for our age to cast beyond ourselves in our opinions, as it is common for the younger sort to lack discretion. This must be known, which, being kept close, might move more grief to hide than hate to utter love. Come. Welcome, dear Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Moreover, us longing to see you, the need we have to use you did provoke our hasty sending. Something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation, so call it? Well, I entreat you both that being a so young days brought up with him, that you by our companies may gather so much as from occasions you may glean, whether aught to us unknown afflicts him thus, that open lies within our remedy. Good gentlemen, he hath much talked of you, and sure I am to men there is not living to whom he more adheres. We lay your service freely at your feet. Thanks, Rosencrantz and gentle Guildenstern. <laughs> Thanks. Guildenstern and gentle Rosencrantz. Oh, heavens make our presence and our practices pleasant and helpful to Hamlet. Aye, amen. Claudius, I do believe I found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that, that do I long to hear. My liege and madame, to expostulate what majesty should be. Why duty is, why day is day, night, night, and time is time. We're nothing only but to waste night, day, and time. Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit, I will be brief. Your noble son is mad. Mad, call it, for to define true madness, what is it to be nothing else but mad? But let that go. More matter with less art. Madam, I swear I use no art at all that he's mad. Tis true, tis true, tis pity, and pity, tis, tis true. A foolish figure, but fool it, for I will use no art at all. Matt, let us grant him then, and now remains that we find the cause of this effect, or rather say, cause of this defect. Consider, I have a daughter. 
Have will, she is mine, and her duty and obedience, Mark, hath given me this. Now gather it to my To the most beautified Ophelia, that is an ill phrase, a vile phrase, but you shall hear thus. In her ex, in, uh, in her excellent white bosom, she is this from Hamlet to her? Good madam, I will be faithful. <gasps> Doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar. But never doubt I love. Oh dear Ophelia, I am ill at these numbers. I have not art to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best. Oh most best believe it. Adieu. And there's more. Thine evermore, most dear lady, whilst this machine is to him, Hamlet. <laughs> this in obedience hath my daughter shown me, and more above hath his solicitings as they fell out by time, by means, and place, all given to my ear. Now what might you think had I seen this hot love on the wing? As I perceived it, I must tell you, before my daughter told me, what might you think had I looked upon this love so idly? What might you think? No, I went round the work. And thus, my young mistress, thus I did but speak. This must not be. She took the fruits of my advice, and he repelled. A short tale to make fell into madness, wherein he now raves, and we all mourn for. Do you think tis this? Maybe very like. Take this from this, if this be otherwise. If circumstances lead me, I will find where the truth is hid. Indeed, if it were hid, within the center. But how may we try it further? You know, sometimes he walks four hours together here in the lobby. So he does indeed. At that time, I'll lose my daughter to him. You know, sir, you and I shall mark the encounter. If he love her not and not be his reason fallen thereon, let me be no assistant for a state. We will try it. Away, I do beseech you both, away. Very true, my lad. Have you a daughter? I have. Let her not walk in the sun. Conception may be a blessing, but as she may conceive, friend, look to it. How do you say by that? Still harping on my daughter! Did he not know me at first? He said, was a fishmonger! Oh, he is far gone. I'll speak to him again. What do you read, my lad? Words! 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 <laughs> what is the matter, my lad? Between who? Well, I mean the matter that you read, my lad. Oh, slander, sir. For the satirical row here says that old men have gray hairs, that their faces be wrinkled, and that they have a plentiful lack of wit. Madness? There is, there is method in it. Hmm. Will you walk out of the air? Into my grave? Well, indeed, that is out of the air. <sighs> <sighs> How pregnant sometimes his replies are! I will leave him and suddenly contrive the means of the meeting between him and my daughter. Hamlet? 
I will take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take anything from me that I will more willingly part with all. Oh, except my life. Fare you well. Okay. Watch out. <laughs> These tedious old fools. Hamlet! <laughs> my good friends! Oh, how dost thou, Gildenstern? Ah, Rosencrantz! Woo! <laughs> my good lads, how do you both? Happy, in that we are not over happy. On Fortune's cap, we are not the very button. Uh, nor the soles of her shoe. Neither. <laughs> what news? None, but that the world's grown honest. And it is doomsday near. What have you, my good friends, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to this prison hither? Prison, my friend? To me, this is a prison. Why then? Your ambition makes it one. Tis too narrow for your mind. Oh, God. I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space were it not that I have bad dreams. But, in the beaten way of friendship, what make you here? To visit you, my friend. No other occasion. Were you not sent for? Well, is it a free visitation? Is it your own inclining? Come, come, nay, speak. <laughs> what should we say, dear friend? Anything but to the purpose. You were sent for, and there is a kind of confession in your looks which your modesties have not crafts enough to color. I know my uncle and mother have sent for you. To what end, friend? That you must teach me. But by the obligation of our ever-preserved love, be even and direct with me whether you were sent for or no. What say you? We were sent for. <sighs> I will tell you why. So shall my anticipation prevent your discovery. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, forgone all custom of exercises, and indeed, it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me but a sterile promontory. What a piece of work is a man, how noble in reason, how infinite in faculties, the beauty of the world, the paragon of animals, and yet, to me? What is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me, no nor woman neither. Though by your smiling, you seem to say so. My friend, there is no such stuff in my thoughts. Well, why did you laugh then when I said man delights not me? To think, my friend, if you delight not in man, what meager entertainment the players shall receive from you. They are coming to offer you service. What players are they? Even those you were wont to take such delight in, the tragedians of the city. There are the players. Gentlemen, you are welcome. Oh, your hands. Come then, you are welcome. But my uncle father and aunt mother are deceived. In what? I am but mad north northwest. When the wind is southerly, I can tell a hawk from a handsaw. My lad, I have news to tell you. Oh, my lad, I have news to tell you. <laughs> These actors come hither, my lord, the best actors in the world, either for tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral, well, and there's also historical, comical, historical, pastoral, tragical, comical, historical, pastoral, tragical, historical, the oracle, Seen individable and poem unlimited. For the law of writ and liberty, these are the only men. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when he speaks of Priam's daughter. If it live in your memory, begin at the line. Oh, let me see, let me see. Oh. The rugged Pyrrhus, like the Hyrcanian beast. Oh, oh 
Tis not so, begins with Pyrrhus. <laughs> the rugged Pyrrhus, he whose sable arms, black as his purpose, did the night resemble when he lay couched in the ominous horse. So proceed you. For God, my lad! Well spoken, with good accent and good discretion. Hath now this black and dread complexion smeared with heritage more dismal, head to foot, now as ye total ghouls, horridly tricked with blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, picked and impasted with the parching streets that led a tyrannous and damned light to their lord's murder, roasted in wrath and fire, and thus oversized with coagulate gore, with eyes like carbuncles, the hellish peerage old grandsire Priam seeks. This is too long. As is your life, sir. Mm -hmm. Prithee, say on. Prithee, no more. Oh. Tis well. I'll have thee speak out the rest of this later. Polonius, will you see the players be well bestowed? And do you hear? Let them be well used, for they are the abstract and brief chronicles of the time. After your death, you would better have a bad epitaph than their ill report while you live. Come, sirs. <sighs> oh, dost thou hear me, old friend? Tomorrow night, you could, afford me, study a speech of some dozen or sixteen lines, which I could set down and insert it, could you not? Aye, my lord. Very well. Follow that lord. Look, you mock him not. <laughs> My good friends, I'll leave you till night. Good. Aye. So goodbye to you. <laughs> now I am alone. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I! Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit that from her working all his visage want, tears in his eyes, distraction in his aspect, a broken voice, and all of his forms suiting to his conceit, and, and all for nothing? What would he do had he the motive and cue for passion that I have? He would drown the stage with tears and cleave the general ear with horrid speech, confound the ignorant, and amaze, indeed, the very faculties of eyes and ears. Yet I, a dull and muddy metal rascal, peak like a, a John of dreams, a pregnant of my cause, and can say nothing. No, not for a man upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Am I a coward? Bloody, bawdy villain! Remorseless, lecherous, treacherous, kindless villain! Oh, vengeance! Why? What an ass am I? This is most brave that I, the son of a dear father murdered, must unpack my heart with words. Well, fly on it! About my brain. I have heard once that guilty creatures sitting at a play have been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father before mine uncle. I'll observe his looks. If he do blench, I'll know my course. The play is the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Drift of confusion, get from him why he's on this this confusion. He does confess he feels himself distracted, but from what cause he will by no means speak. Nor do we find him forward to be sounded, but with crafty madness keeps aloof when we would bring him to some confession of his true state. 
Did you assay him to any pastime? Madam, it so fell out that certain players we wrought in the way. Of these we told him, and there did seem in him a kind of joy to hear of it. I think they have ordered this knight to play before him. Tis most true. He beseeched me to entreat you both to hear and see the matter. Good fellows, give him a further edge and drive his purpose into these delights. We shall, sir. Ophelia, prepare yourself, for we have closely sent for him with hither. We shall bestow ourselves, that seeing unseen, we may of your encounter frankly judge, and gather by as he has behaved, if it be the affliction of love or no that thus he suffers for. And for your part, Ophelia, I do wish that your good beauties be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I hope your virtues will bring him to his wonted way again, to both your honors. Not my wish it may. Ophelia, walk you here. Grace is so please you. We will bestow ourselves. Wait. Mm -hmm. Read this book. A color of such exercise may color your, lo color your loneliness. I hear him coming. Let's withdraw. To be, or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the spurns, slings, and arrows of outrageous fortune, or, or to take up arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. To die, to sleep, no more. By a sleep to say we end the heartache and thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Ah, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the pangs of despised love, and the spurns that the patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietest make with a bare knife point? Who would burdens bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of? Thus conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with the pale cast of thought and enterprises of great pitch. With this regard, our currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft you now, the fair Ophelia. How do you for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well. I have remembrances of yours that I have long longed to deliver. I pray you now receive them. No, not mine. I never gave you aught. You know right well you did. And with them words, so sweet breath composed has made things more rich. Their perfumes lost. Take these again for the noble mind. Rich gifts wax poor when givers provoke unkind. There. Are you honest? Honest? Are you fair? What means this? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. I did love you once. Indeed, you made me believe so. You should not have believed it. For virtue can not so inoculate, but we shall relish of it. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I myself am indifferent, honest, but even I have done such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. What would men such as I do crawling between earth and heaven? We are errant knaves all. Believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Where is your father? At home. Let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool though wear, but in his own house. Farewell. 
Hammer, please. Get thee to a nunnery. Or if thou wouldst need Mary, marry a fool. To a nunnery. Go, and quickly, too. Oh, go to, I'll no more on it, it hath made me mad. I say, we will have no more marriage. Those that are married already, all but one, shall live. The rest will keep as they are. To a nunnery. Go. Oh, what a noble mind is here or thrown. The courtier soldiers, scholars, eye, tongue, and sword, the observed of all observers, quite, quite down. And I, of ladies most deject and wretched, that sucked the honey of his music vows, now see that with most noble and sovereign reason, blasted with ecstasy. Oh, woe is me! To have seen what I have seen. See what I see. Love, his affections do not that. Nor would he speak. Though a left form a little was not like madness. There's something in his soul or which his melancholy sits on brood. And I do doubt the hatch in the disclose will be some danger. Which for to prevent I have in quick determination, thus set it down. He shall with speed to England. What think you on it? It shall do well, but yet do I believe the origin and commencement of his grief sprung on neglected love? Oh, now, Ophelia! <laughs> you need not tell us what good Hamlet said. We heard all. And Claudius, do as you please. But if you hold it fit after the play, let his mother all alone entreat him to show his grief. Let her be round with him. I'll be placed, so please you, in the ear of all their conference. If she find him not, to England send him, or confine him where your wisdom best shall think. It shall be so. Madness and great ones must not unwatch go. To you, trippingly on the tongue. Do not saw the air too much with your hand, but use all thusly. For in the very torrent, tempest, and, well, as I may say, whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and begat a temperance that may give it smoothness. Oh, it offends me to the soul to hear a fellow tear a passion to tatters, to very rags, to split the ears of the common folk who, for the most part, are capable of nothing but inexplicable dumb shows and noise. I pray you, avoid it. I warrant you, sir. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action, with this special observance, that you not o'erstep the very modesty of nature. For anything so or done is done from the purpose of play, whose at the first and now was and is to hold the mirror up to nature, to show virtue her own image, scorn her own feature, and the very age and body of time his weight and measure. Now, this or done, or come tardy off, Though it makes the unskillful laugh, cannot help but make the judicious grieve. A sense of which one must, in your allowance, go away a whole theater of others. Go make you ready. <laughs> Horatio, thou art e'en just a man, as e'er my conversation cope with all. Oh, Nay, do not think I flatter. For what advancement may I hope from thee that hast no revenue but to feed and clothe thee? Why should the poor be flattered? Dost thou hear? Since my dear soul was mistress of her choice, and could of men distinguish, her election hath sealed thee for herself. For thou hast been as one in suffering all that suffers nothing, a man whose fortunes, buffets, and rewards has tamed with equal thanks. Give me that man that is not passion's slave, and I will wear him in my heart's core, I, in the heart of my heart, as I do thee. <laughs> Something too much of this. Um, <laughs> there is a play tonight before my uncle. One scene of it comes near the circumstance of which I have told thee of my father's death. I prithee, even with the very comment of thy soul, observe my uncle. If his guilt does not unkennel itself in one speech, it is a damned ghost that we have seen. Keep your watch, for I, mine eyes, will rivet to his face, and after we will both our judgments join in judgment of his seeming. Well, my friend, get you a place.
How fares our cousin Hamlet? Oh, excellent in faith, the chameleon's dish. I eat the air promise crammed. You cannot feed capons so. I have nothing with this answer, Hamlet. These words are not mine. No, nor mine now. Old man, hmm? you played once in the university, you say? Oh, that I did. I was accounted a good actor. <coughs> what did you enact? I did an act Julius Caesar. I was killed in the Capitol. Brutus killed me. It was a brute part of him to kill so capital a calf there. Mm -hmm. Be the players ready. I am the stay upon your patience. Come hither, my dear Hamlet, sit by me. Now, oh, dear mother, here's prospect more attractive. Ooh, who? Do you mark that? Lady, shall I lie in your lap? No, body, <laughs> my head upon your lap. You are married tonight. Uh, who, I? I, you. Well, what should a man do but be married? For look you how my mother sits, and my father died within two hours. Nay, hey, it is twice two months. So long? Twice two months, and not forgotten yet? And there's hope a great man's memory may outlive his life half a year. For us and for our tragedy, here stooping to your clemency, we beg your hearing patiently. Is this a prologue or tis brief? As woman's love. <sighs> oh wow. Full thirty dozen moons. Whoosh. Whoosh. With borrowed. <gasps> she. About the world have times twelve thirties been, since love did our hearts, and Hymen did our hands, unite mutual in most sacred bands. So many journeys made the sun ah. and moon <sighs> make us again count o'er ere love be done. Friend, oh. I must leave you. Love, and shortly too. My operant powers their functions leave to do. And thou shalt live in this fair world behind. Honored, beloved, and happy one as kind. <sighs> For husband shall. Oh! speak. But what we do determine after we break, but to ourselves and passion we propose, that passion ending doth thy purpose lose. So think thou wilt no second husband wed, but die thy thoughts when thy first lord is dead. Both here and hence pursue me lasting strife, if once a widow ever I be wife. Tis deeply sworn, sweet. Leave me here a while. Spirits go dull, and fain I would beguile the tedious days with sleep. Oh no. Oh. Sleep rock thy brain, and never come mischanced between us twain. Madam, what think you of this play? A lady doth protest too much, methinks. Oh, but she'll keep her word. What do you call the play? The Mousetrap. This play is the image of a murder done in cold blood. Tis a knavish piece of work, but what of that? We that have free souls, it touches us not. That is the brother to the king. You are as good as a chorus. You will see anon how the murderer gets the love of his brother's oh. 
wife. Thoughts blank, hands apt, drugs fit, and time agree. Confederate season, else no creature seen. Thou mixture rank of midnight weeds collected, of Hecate's band thrice blasted, thrice infected. Thy natural magic and dire property on wholesome life usurp immediately. What? Frank with false fire! How fair you! It was about to get good! this to the doctor. Hamlet, put your discourse into some frame and start not so wildly from my affairs. I am tame, sir. Pronounce. Your mother, with most great affliction of spirit, hath sent me to see you. You're welcome. Nay, this courtesy is not of the right breed. If it shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, I will do your mother's commandment. Sir, I cannot. What? Make you a wholesome answer? My wit's diseased. <laughs> my uncle used it. Mother, you say? Then thus she says, your behavior hath struck her into amazement and admiration. Oh, so wonderful a son that can so astonish a mother. She desires to speak with you in her chambers ere you go to bed. We shall obey when she ten times our mother. Hamlet, you did once love me. And do still. We'll buy these pickers and stealers. What is your cause of distemper? You do surely bar the door upon your own liberty if you deny your griefs to your friend. Oh, the recorders! Let me see one. Why do you go about to recover the wind of me as if you were to drive me into a toil? My friend, if my duty be too bold, my love is too unmannerly. I do not very well understand that. I cannot. I, I have not the skill. Why, look you now. How unworthy a thing you make of me. You would play upon me. You would seem to know my stops. You would pluck out the heart of my mystery. You would play me from my lowest note to the top of my compass, and there is such music, excellent voice, in this little organ, yet you cannot make it speak. It's blood. You think I am easier to be played on than a pipe? Well, call me what instrument you will, though you can fret me, you cannot play upon me. My lad, your mother would like to speak with you, and presently. And I will come to my mother by and by. Great. I will say so. By and by is easily said. Leave me. Is now the very witching time of night. Soft now to my mother. No oh, heart, lose not thy nature. Let me be cruel, not unnatural. I will speak daggers to her, yet use none. I like him not, nor 
your sins, it's safe with us to let this madness rage. Therefore, prepare you. I will forthwith dispatch, and he to England shall along with you. The terms of our saint may not endure, had it so near as doth our really grow out of his brows. We will ourselves provide. To keep those many, many bodies safe that live and feed upon your majesty. Arm you, I pray you, to the speedy voyage. We will haste us. He's going to his mother's chamber. Behind the curtain I'll convey myself to hear the process. Fare you well. I'll call upon you ere you go to bed to tell you what I know. Thanks, dear my friend. Oh, my offense is rank. It smells to heaven. It hath the eldest mark of Cain upon it. A brother's murder. Pray can I not, though inclination be as sharp as will. My stronger guilt defeats my stronger intent. What if these cursed hands were thicker than itself with brother's blood? Is there not enough rain in the sweet heavens to wash it as white as snow? And what's in prayer but this twofold force to be forced out ere we come to fall or pardon being down? Then I'll look up. My fault is past, but oh, what form of prayer can serve my turn? Forgive me, my foul murder? Well, that cannot be, since I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. My crown, my ambition, my wife. May one be pardoned and retain the offense? In the corrupt occurrence of this world, offense's gilded hand may be shoved by justice, and often tis seen the wicked prize itself. It, it buys out the law. But tis not so above. There is no shuffling. There the action lies in his true nature. But what then? What rests? Try what repentance can, but what can it not? What can it and what can it not repent? Oh, wretched state. Oh, bless him as black as death. Oh, lime soul that struggling to be free art more ensnared. Help, angels, make a say! Foul stubbornness. And heart which shrinks of steel, be soft as the news of the newborn babe. And all may be well. Now might I do it, Pat. Now he is a praying, and now I'll do it. And so he goes to heaven, and so I am revenge. That would be scanned. A villain kills my father, and for that I, his sole son, do this same villain send to heaven! Why, this is higher in salary, not revenge. He took my father grossly as flush as may. Am I revenged then to take him in his passing when he is fit and seasoned for the passage? No. When he is drunk asleep, or in his rage, or in the incestuous pleasure of his bed, then trip him, that his heels may kick at heaven, and that his soul may be as damned and black as hell where to it goes. My mother stays. This physic but prolongs thy sickly days. My words fly up, but my thoughts remain below. Words without thoughts never to heaven come. me even here. Pray you, be round with him. I warrant you. Fear be not. Withdraw. Okay. Now, mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Well, go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. Why, how now, Hamlet? What's the matter now? Have you forgot me? No, for God's sake. 
You are your husband's brother's wife, and what it were not so, you are my mother. Nay, then I'll set those to you that can speak. Come, come, and sit you down. You shall not move until I hold you up a glass where you may see the inmost part of yourself. What wilt thou do? Thou wilt not murder me? Help! Help! How now, rat? Oh, oh, oh! oh. I am slain. What hast thou done? Nay, I know not. Is it my uncle? Oh, what a rash and bloody deed is this! A bloody deed! Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a man and marry with his brother. Kill a man? Thou wretched, rash, intruding fool. Farewell. I took thee for thy better. Leave wringing of your hands. Peace, sit you down. Let me bring your heart, for so I shall, if it be made of penetrable stuff. What have I done, that thou dost whack thy tongue against me? Such an act that blurs the grace and blush of modesty, calls virtue hypocrite, makes marriage vows as false as Dicer's oaths. Look here, upon this picture and on this, the counterfeit presentment of two brothers. See what a form was set on his seal. A commemoration and form indeed, where every god did seem to set his seal to give the world assurance of a man. This was your husband. Look you now at what follows. Here is your husband. Have you eyes? What judgment would make you step from this to this? Set sure you have, else you could not have motion. Eyes without feeling, feeling without sight, or but a sickly part of one true sense, could not so mope. Oh, shame! Where is thy blood? Oh, Hamlet, speak no more! Thou turnst my eyes into my very soul, and there I see such black and grainy spots as will not leave their stain. Oh, speak to me no more! These words, like daggers, enter in my ears. A murderer and a villain, a cut purse of- No! More! <laughs> Forget! This visitation is but to wet thy almost blunted purpose! But look, amazement on thy mother sits. How is it with you, lady? Alas, how is it with you that you do bend your eye on vacancy and with the incorporeal air do hold discourse? O oh, gentle son, whereon do you look? look on him, on him! Look you how pale he glares! Do not convert with me, lest your piteous action convert my stern effects. Then what I want will warrants true color, tears perchance for blood. To whom do you speak this? Do you see nothing there? Nothing at all. Yet all that is I see. Why look you there? My father in his habit as he lived. I, look where he goes even now. This is the very coinage of your brain. This bodiless creation, madness is very cunning in madness. My pulse as yours doth temperately keep time and it makes us healthful music. It is not madness that I have uttered. Mother, for love of grace, lay not that flattering unction to your soul that not your trespass but my madness speaks. It will but skin and film the ulcerous place, mining all within, infects unseen. Repent what's past, avoid what is to come, and do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them rancor. Oh, Hamlet, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Oh, throw away the worser part of it and live the purer with the other half. Good night, but go not to my uncle's bed. Assume a virtue if you have it not. For this dead lord, I do repent. I will bestow him and will answer well to the death I gave him. So again, good night. I must be cruel only to be kind. This bad begins and worse remains behind. Be thou assured, if words be made of breath and breath of life, I have no life to breathe what thou hast said to me. 
I must to England, you know that. Alack, I had forgot. Tis so concluded all? Those letters sealed. And my two school fellows, whom I will trust as I will adders fanged, they bear the mandate. Let it work. This man will set me packing. This counselor is now most still, most secret, and most grave. Who was, in life, a foolish and prating knave. Come, sir, to draw toward an end with you. Good night, mother. both countenance and excuse. Friends both, go seek him it out. Speak fair and bring the body into safety. I pray you haste into this. Oh, Gertrude, come away. My soul is full of discord and dismay. Safely stowed. Hamlet. Oh, here they come. Hamlet! What have you done with the dead body? Compounded it with dust. <laughs> where to tis kin? Tell us where it is that we, so that we may take it then. Do not think that I can keep your counsel and not mine own. Besides, to be demanded of a sponge, what replication is to be made by the son of a king? Take you me for a sponge? I understand you not, my friend. I am glad of it. A knavish speech sleeps in a foolish ear. Hamlet, you must tell us where the body is and go with us to your uncle. Bring me to him. I have sent to seek him and to find the body. How dangerous is it that this man goes loose? Yet must we not put the strong law on him? He is love of the distracted multitude, who likes not in their judgment but in their eyes. And where it's so, the penalty is weighed, but never the offense. To bear all smooth and even, the setting sending him away must seem deliberate pause. <laughs> How now? What have we fallen? Where the dead body is bestowed, we cannot get from him. Now, Hamlet, where is Flonius? At supper. At supper where? Not where he eats, but where he is eaten. A certain convocation of politic worms are yet at him now. That is the end. Where is Polonius? In heaven. Send thither to thee. Well, if your messenger find him not there, seek him in the other place, yourself. <coughs> but if you find him not there within two months, you shall <laughs> nose him as you go up the stairs into the lobby. Go, seek him there. 
He will stay till you come. Hamlet, this deed for thine a special safety, which we do tender as we dearly grieve for which thou hast done, must send thee hence with fiery quickness. Therefore, prepare thyself for England. England? Mm. Good. Farewell, dear mother. Thy loving father, Hamlet. My mother. Mother and father is man and wife. Man and wife is one in flesh. And so, my mother. Well, come, for England. I'll have him hence tonight. Away, for everything is sealed and done that else things on the affair. Pray you, make haste. And England, if thou lovest me still, bring about the present death of Hamlet. Do it, England, for like the hectic in my blood he rages, and thou must hear me. Till I know tis done, however my haps, my joys, will never begin. Some part of Poland. Goes it against the main of Poland, sir, or for some frontier? Truly to speak with no addition, they go to gain a small patch of ground that hath in it no profit but name. To pay five ducats, five, I would not for him. Two thousand souls and twenty thousand ducats will not debate the question of this straw. I humbly thank you, sir. God be with you. Please, you go. I'll be with you straight. All occasions do inform against me and spur my dull revenge. What is a man if his chief good and market of his time be but to sleep and feed? A beast, no more. Sure he that made us with such large discourse, looking before and after, gave us not that capability and godlike reason to bust in us unused. Now whether it be bestial oblivion or some craven scruple of thinking too precisely on the event, I know not. Why, yet I live to say this things to do, since I have cause, and will, and strength, and means to do it. Examples as gross as earth exhort me. Rightly to be great is not to stir without great argument, but greatly to find quarrel within a straw when honor's at the stake. How stand I, then, that have a father killed, a mother stained, excitement of my reason, and my blood, and let all sleep? To my shame, I see the imminent death of 20,000 men that fight for a cause whereon the numbers cannot try the cause. They go to their graves like beds where the, where the world is not continent and cannot fold enough to hide the slain. Oh, from this day forth, my thoughts be bloody or be nothing worth. I will not speak with her. She's unfortunate, indeed distract. Her mood will needs be pity. What would she have? She speaks much of her father. Says she hears there's tricks in the world and hems and beats her heart. Her winks and nods and gestures indeed would make one think there might be thought, though. Nothing sure, yet much unhappily. It were good she was spoken with. Let her come in. To my sick soul. Each toy seems prologue to some great amiss. So full of artless jealousy is guilt. It spills itself in fearing to be spilt. <coughs> How now, Ophelia? How should I hear true love know from another one? Alas, sweet lady, what imports this song? Say you? Nay, pray. Mark. He is dead and gone, lady. Nay, but Ophelia, hey, Mark, why his shroud as the mountain snow? Alas, look here, my love. How do you, Ophelia? Lord, we know what we are, but we know not what we may be. Conceal upon her father. And up he rose, 
hinged on his cloak. He dropped the chamber door. He let in a maid, let out a maid, never departed more. Orphelia. Oh, make an end on it. Quote, see, before you tumbled me, you promised me to wait. How long has she been thus? I hope all will be well. We must be patient. But I cannot bear but we used to think that they would lay him in the cold ground. My brother shall hear of this. Shall I thank you for your good counsel? Good night. Good night. <clears throat> oh, this is the poison of deep grief. It springs all from her father's death, and now we hope. Oh, Gertrude, Gertrude, when sorrows come, they come not in single spies, but in battalions. First her father slain, next your son gone, and he the most violent author of just his own remove. The people muddy, thick, and unwholesome in their thoughts and whispers of good Polonius' death. And we have done but greenly to bury him in secret. Poor Ophelia, buried from herself and divided from. What's the matter? Save yourself, my lord. Laertes, in a riotous head, overbears your guard. Where is Claudius? Give me my father! Holy! Good Laertes! That drop of blood that's crop will cling to be a bad word! Give the cause, Laertes, if thy rebellion looks so giant like. Let him go, Gertrude. Tell me, Laertes, why thou art thus incensed. Let him go, Gertrude. Speak, man. Where is my father? Dead. But not by him. Let him demand his fill. How came he dead? I'll not be troubled with. To hell! Allegiance! To this point I stand about the world's a gift to negligence. Let come what comes. Only I'll be revenged most truly for my father. Who shall stay you? My will? Not all the world. Good Laertes, if you desire to know the certainty of your dear father, is it written that in soupstake you will draw both friend and foe, winner and loser? None but his enemies. Why, now you seem like a good child and true gentleman. That I am guiltless of your dear father's death, and am most sensibly in grief for it. It shall as level to your judgment peer as day does to your eye. Let her come in. Oh, heat, dry up my brains. Tears seven times salt. Kind sister, sweet Ophelia. Shh, shh. They bore him their face on the bier, and in his grave rained many a tear. Very well, my dove. Here's Rosemary. That's for remembrance. Pray you love, remember. And there's pansies. That's for thoughts. There's rue for you, and there's some for me. You must wear your rue with a difference. Here's the day I'd give you some violets, but they all withered away when my father died. They say he made a good end. Thoughts and afflictions. Passion, hell itself. She turns to favor and to prettiness. Will he not come again? Will he not come again? No, no, he is dead. Go to thy deathbed. He will never come again. He is gone. He is gone. Do you see this? Oh, God! Go. Laertes, if by direct or by collateral hand you find us touch, we will our kingdom give. Our crown, our life, and all that we call ours to you in satisfaction. But if not, be you content to lend your patience to us, and we shall jointly labor with your soul to keep it due content. Let this be so. His means of death, his obscure funeral, no noble right nor formal ostentation. Cry to be heard, as from heaven to earth, that I must call it in question. So you shall. And where the offense is, let the great axe fall. I pray you go with me. Horatio, when thou shalt have overlooked this, repair thou to me with as much speed as thou wouldst fly death. I have words to speak in thy ear will make thee dumb, but they are much too light for the bore of the matter. This will bring thee where I am. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern hold their course for England. Of them, I have much to tell thee. Farewell. He that thou knowest thine, Hamlet.
your conscience my acquaintance seal, and you must put me in heart for friend. Sith have you heard, and with a knowing ear, he who hath your noble father slain pursued my life. Well appears, but tell me why you proceeded not against these feats. Oh, for two special reasons, which may to you seem much unsinewed, but yet to me they're strong. His mother lives almost by his looks, and myself, my virtue or my plague, be it either which, she is so conjunctive to my life and soul that as the stars move, but not in his fear, I could not but buy her. And the other motive why to a public count I may not go is the great love the common people bear him. And so have I, noble father lost, a sister driven into desperate terms. But my revenge will come. Break not your sleeps for that. He must not think that we are made of stuff so flat and dull. I loved your father, and we love ourselves. And that, I hope, can teach you to imagine that. How now? What news? Letters, my lord, from, from Hamlet. From Hamlet? Who brought them? I saw them not. Leave us. <clears throat> High and mighty, you shall know I am set alone on your kingdom. Tomorrow shall I beg to leave to see your kingly eyes, when I shall, first asking your pardon, Thereunto recount the occasion of my sudden, more strange return. Hamlet. Know you the hand. Tis Hamlet's character. Let him come. It warms the very sickness in my heart that I shall live and tell him to his face. Thus didst thou. One woe doth tread upon another's heel. So fast they follow. Your sister's drowned, Laertes. Drowned? Oh. Where? She fell into the brook. Her clothes spread wide and mermaid-like. A while they bore her up, but long it could not be to let her garments, heavy with their drink, pulled the poor wretch from her melodious lay to muddy death. Last, then she is drowned. 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 <laughs> Too much of water hast thou for Ophelia, and therefore I forbid my tears. <laughs> Yet it is our trick. When these are gone, I have a speech of fire that fate would blaze. Let's follow, Gertrude. How much I had to do to calm his rage. Now fear, I will have to give it start again. Therefore, let's follow. For that frame outlives a thousand tenants. Huh. I like thy wit well in good faith. The gallows does well. Do it again. Go. All right. <laughs> Who builds stronger than either a mason, a shipwright, or a carpenter? Aye. Tell me that. Very now I can tell. Do it. I cannot tell. 
Go, cudgel thy brains no more about it. Up oh, and fetch me a stoop of liquor. Thank you. Has this fellow no feeling of his business? He jokes in grave making. Custom hath made it in him a property of easiness. Says so. Mm. That skull had a tongue in it and could sing once. Has a knave jowls it into the ground as if for Cain's jawbone that did the first murder? This might be the pate of a politician, might it not? It might. <laughs> Here's fine revolution if we have tricked to see it. <clears throat> There's another. Now why might not that be the skull of a lawyer? Why does he suffer this mad knave now to knock him about the sconce with a dirty shovel and will not tell him of his action of battery? Whose grave is this, sirrah? Ah, mine, sir. I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. You lie out on it, sir. Therefore it is not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it. Yet it is mine. It is not yours. Tis for, the, tis for the dead, not for the lively. Well, therefore, thou liest. Ah, tis a lively lie, sir. Twill away again from me to you. How long hast thou been grave maker? Hmm. Of all the days in the year, I came to it that very day young Hamlet was born. He that is mad and sent into England. I marry? Was he sent him to England? Why, because he was mad. He shall recover his wits there. Or if he do not, tis no great matter there. Why? Twill not be seen in him there. There the men are as mad as he. How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? Faith, even with losing his wits. Upon what ground? Why, here in Denmark. How long will a man lie in the earth ere he rot? Faith, if he be not rotten before he die, he'll last you some eight year or nine year. Ah, here's a skull that hath lain in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? Oh, a pestilence on him for a mad rogue. He poured a flagon of white wine on my head once. Mmm, mm, very naughty. The same skull was yours. Let me see. Alas, poor York. I knew him, Horatio. Uh, a fellow of infinite jest, a most excellent fancy. He hath bore me on his back a thousand times, and now how abhorred in my imagination it is. My stomach turns at it. Here be those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jabs now, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on roar? Not one now to mock your own grinning? To what base uses must we return, Horatio? Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might patch a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that the world, which kept the world in awe, and might patch a wall to expel the winter's flaw. But soft. Let's talk a while. Who is this they follow? That is Laertes. What ceremony else? Her obsequies have been as far enlarged as we have warranty. Her death was doubtful, and but that great command always weighs the order. She should in ground unsanctified been lodged, yet here she is. Must there no more be done? No more be done. We should profane the service of the dead to sing a requiem. Lay her in the earth, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violet spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, ministering angel, so my sister be, when thou liest howling. What? The fair Ophelia. Sweet, this sweet. Farewell. I hoped thou should have been my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bride bed to have decked, sweet maid, and not have strewed thy grave. Hold off the earth a while, till I have caught her once more in mine arms. Ophelia, Ophelia. Now, Polly, your 
dust upon the quick and dead to love this flat mountain you have made. <laughs> what is he whose grief bears such an emphasis, whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars? This is I, Hamlet. The devil take thy soul! Why ask you this? What would you do to undertake, to show yourself indeed your father's son, your sister's brother, more than in words? To cut his throat in the church. Well, revenge should have no bounds. We'll put on those shall praise your excellence in fencing. Bring you, in sport, together with Hamlet, your family's killer and wager on your heads. Hamlet, being remiss, will not peruse the foil so that with ease or with a little shuffling, you may choose a sword unbated and in passive practice requite him for your father and sister. I will do it, and for that purpose, I'll anoint my sword. There is a poison that I bought in France, so mortal that, but I dip a knife in it. No antidote exists. Under the moon can save the thing from death, that is scratched with all. This project should have a back or second that might hold if it did blast proof. Soft, let me see. When he calls for drink, I'll have prepared a chalice where on but sipping. If he by chance escaped your venom sword, our purpose may be held there. We'll put the matter to the present push. This grave shall have a living monument. An hour of quiet thereby shall we see. Till then, in patience, our proceeding be. No leisure baited my head should be struck off. Is it possible? But wilt thou hear how I did proceed? I beseech you. I sat me down, devised a new commission, wrote it fair, an earnest conjuration from my uncle that on writ and knowing of it, they, the bearers, should be put to death. Folded up the writ in the form of the other, subscribed it, placed it, the changeling never known. So Guildenstern and Rosencrantz went to their deaths. They are not near my conscience. Their demise does by their own insinuation grow. But I am very sorry, good Horatio. At two Laertes, I forgot myself. For by the image of my cause, I see the portraiture of his. Your lordship is right welcome back to Denmark. 
Only thank you, sir. Dost know this waterfly? That's Renaldo, once Polonius's man. I come with a message from your great uncle. I will receive it. Put your bonnet to its right use. Tis for the head. I thank you, sir. It, it is very hot. No, believe me, it is very cold. Your uncle bade me to signify to you that he hath made a great wager on your head, sir. Here is the matter. Newly returned Laertes, believe me, an absolute gentleman of soft society. What imports the nomination of Laertes? You are not ignorant for which excellence he has with his weapon. What's his weapon? Rapier and dagger. That's two of his weapons, but well... Your uncle hath laid that five rounds of fencing between yourself and Laertes. He shall not exceed you. It would come immediate trial if you were vouchsafe the answer. How if I answer no? I mean, my lord. Sir, I will walk here in the hall. It is the breathing time of day with me. Let the foils be brought, the gentleman willing. I will win for my uncle, if I can. If not, I will gain nothing but my shame in the odd hits. Your uncle seems to know if your pleasure holds the fence with Laertes, or if you will take longer time. I am constant to my purposes. They follow my uncle's pleasure. If his fitness speaks, mine is ready now or whensoever. All are coming down. In happy time. Your mother desires you to converse gently with Laertes before you fall to. She well instructs me. You will lose, my friend. I do not think so. Since Laertes went into France, I have been in continual practice. But thou wouldst not know how ill all's here about my heart. Uh, but it is no matter. If your mind dislikes anything, obey it. I will forestall the repair hither and say you're not fit. But not a wit. We defy augury. There is a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, tis not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. Since no man of aught he leaves knows, what is it to leave betimes? Let be. Come, Hamlet. Come take this hand from me. Give me your pardon, sir. I have done you wrong. But pardon it as you are a gentleman. This presence knows, and you must needs have heard, how I am suffered with a sore distraction. What I have done that might your, non, might your honor, nature, and exception roughly awake, I here proclaim, was madness. Was it Hamlet wrong, Laertes? Never Hamlet. If Hamlet from himself be taken away, and then does wrong, Laertes, then Hamlet does it not. Hamlet denies it. Who does it then? His madness. If it be so, Hamlet is of the faction that is wrong. His poor madness is Hamlet's enemy. Sir, in this audience, let my describe from a purpose evil free me so far in your most generous thoughts that I have shot the arrow o'er my house and hurt my brother. I am satisfied, nature, whose motive in this case should stir me most to my revenge, but in terms of my honor, I stand aloof. But I do receive your offered love like love and will not wrong it. I thank thee freely of it. And will this brother's wager frankly play? Give us the foils. Come on. One for me. I'll be your foil, Laertes. In my ignorance, your skill shall, like a star in the darkest night, stick fiery off indeed. You mock me, sir. No, by this hand. Give him the foils, Renaldo. Cousin Hamlet, you know the wager. Very well, mother. You have laid the odds on the weaker side. <coughs> I do not fear it. I have seen you both. This is too heavy, let me see another. This likes me well. These foils have all the length. Aye, my good lord. <laughs> Set me the cup of wine upon that table. The king drinks to Hamlet's better breath, and in the cup a pearl shall he throw, richer than that of all my holdings. Now the king drinks to Hamlet. Mm. Come begin, and you the judges, bear a wary eye. Sir. Come. Yes. Uh, one. No. Judgment. A hit. A very palpable hit. Well, again. Stay. Give me drink. Hamlet, this pearl, it's thine. Here's to thy help. Give him the cup. 
I'll play this back first. Set it by a while. Come. Touch, I do confess it. Our son shall win. Here, Hamlet, take my napkin, rub thy brows. Good Gertrude, carouse us to thy fortune, Hamlet. Gertrude, do not drink. I will, my lord. I pray you pardon me. Come, let me wipe thy face. Come, for the third, Laertes. You do but dally. Say you so? Come on.
Let me speak to the yet unknown world how these things came about. So shall you hear of carnal, bloody, and unnatural acts of accidental judgment, casual slaughters of death put on by cunning and forced cause, and above all, Hamlet. Good night, sweet prince. And flights of angels sing thee to thy rest.